Earlier this month, the FIA organized the FIA Safety Week, uh, which is a set of seminars on different topics related to safety. And uh, anybody can register, just go on the FIA website and uh, click on the registration link. Fill up the form and you will get access to all the recordings of the seminars uh, that happen during the week. Today we are going to look at the seminar dedicated to the safety cages and uh, the homologation process for safety cages at the FIA. All cages built in the US are based on Appendix J, Article 253 and 253-8. And uh, those articles haven't been uh, updated since 2020, and there's a good reason for that. Listen what they have to say. Uh, Self-made cages are no longer permitted for cars homologated from, as from January 2021. That means that for cars homologated before 2021, self-built cages has to be built according to Appendix G of 2020. And for cars homologated before 2017, we have to refer to Appendix G of 2016. What this means is that since uh, 2021, Appendix J, uh, Article 253-8, that describes the roll cage design, is no more updated. And so for non homologated cages, now the responsibility uh, rests to the ASN to define the rules. And uh, the ASN in the US is uh, ACC US. USAC is a member of ACC US, which uh, technically makes ARA a possible ASN for rally with the FIA, but since ARA still relies on Appendix J for its roll cage rules, they are allowing obsolete designs to still be produced. So that's why it's interesting to look at uh, what the new FIA rules look like and which direction they are heading. Then the seminar goes on to describe uh, what a current roll cage should look like and the current specification. And uh, one of the interesting things is that besides the three main base structure designs that we are used to, there is a fourth one that has been introduced. The third uh, base structure uh, must be made of uh, two lateral roll bars, two transverse members, two rear pillars uh, that must be straight in a side view on the same criteria concerning the location of the connections. They also clarify that there must be a minimum distance between the seat and the main roll bar. Next interesting development is the roof bars where the forward V design is no more allowed. So here again, it is compulsory to have uh, this kind of uh, rear advancement. Uh, two designs are possible. Uh, we have the V-shape design and the design with intersection. So this design uh, is not in compliance uh, with the regulation. There is a very interesting segment on door bars and it looks like the only authorized design now is the X design. So you still have the traditional one single piece bar and the other two halves. But for the uh, X that is made of two continuous bars, they have a lot more details about the specification of the bends and also the specification on those gussets. We have a second design which is possible. Uh, it's the design with door bars uh, without intersection. So here we have uh, three cases. We have the one bend members, uh, two bend non-parallel members, and finally here on the right, uh, two bend parallel members. Please note that for these cases, uh, there are specific uh, dimensions uh, which are detailed uh, in uh, the regulations. In order to continue with uh, the door bars without intersection, uh, please note that it is uh, authorized to have an offset laterally uh, following the Y plus axis. Um, here as well, you have uh, straight and curved edges, uh, and we have dedicated uh, dimensional criteria for, uh, for this case. For the two bended um, door bars, we have as well a specific um, and dedicated dimension, dimensional criteria. There are also now specification for the gusset of the windshield reinforcement bar. We have the specific case uh, when we don't have any intersection between the door bar and the windscreen pillar. Uh, here, a specific reinforcement made of fabricated sheet metal uh, is compulsory. Another interesting development is that they are now contradicting how to secure the door bars to the body shell of the chassis that was explicitly said in the 2020 rules. Is it possible to connect the door bars directly to the body shell? 
so it is important here to underline that mm -hmm. the door bars must always be connected to the safety cage and not to the body shelf. Is it possible to connect the windscreen, uh, windscreen pillar reinforcement directly to the body shell? Uh, so here again, the windscreen pillars must be always connected to the safety cage and not to the body shell. The optional dash bar is now compulsory if you are not retaining the stock dash. It is mandatory to uh, have front transfer, uh, transverse member reinforcement. So here two possibilities. So one cross member directly linked uh, on the front roll bar and, and the cross design on the right uh, with uh, reinforcement linked to the front tourette. It's compulsory if the road car dashboard is not re retained. On the topic of optional bars, there is an interesting remark on the maximum length of tubing that can be used. Uh, there is no, no restriction uh, to add additional tube between tubes of the safety cage as long as they comply with all the other requirements from the regulations, like meeting the frontal projection area or the door aperture area. And also meeting a limitation of 15 meters of tube uh, smaller than 40 millimeter. They also discussed double main hoop options for trucks and how to integrate roll cages to existing tubular frame in side by side. And they make uh, another number of useful clarifications on the rules. So no, it is not possible to connect a structure for fixing the seat supports to the tube, making the, the, the safety cage. Nevertheless, as mentioned in this slide, there are two exceptions. Uh, there is the use of the seat attenuator and the use of seats with mounting on the back. Uh, so this design is not in compliance with the regulation. There is also that interesting bit that says that if a cage has a bad design, it is the fault of the fabricator and not of the inspector. Even if a mistake was not highlighted during the pre-validation of the design and only discovered at very late stage in the process, during the inspection, for example, it's not possible to accept the design. Please keep in mind that the initial mistake is from the manufacturer and that you will always have the support of the FIA and the Mortgage Regulation Committee for applying regulation in a, in a correct way. There is also a large segment on the uh, homologation process in homologated cages. Uh, interesting to us is that now the database to uh, see the homologation of a roll cage is available online. And uh, you can also just scan the QR code to pull the data from the database. Uh, one thing of note is that now uh, roll cages homologation expire after 10 years, which is a really new development. According to the regulation, the certificate lapses 10 years after the initial certification date. As from the expired date, no more safety cage may be built according to that specific design or certificate. But from now on, uh, a design is valid for 10 years. That means that uh, uh, you can produce it for 10 years, and in 10 years, you will have to recertify it with the applicable regulation. But during those 10 years, all the safety cages that have been produced, they are, li they are valid for their lifetime. So there is no, no, no time limit for the vehicle themselves. What this means is if you are trying to logbook a cage with FIA paperwork that is more than 10 years old, it shouldn't be accepted for a logbook anymore. And there is also a last final clarification that is helpful. The repairs must be carried out by the safety cage manufacturer or by someone designated by him and under his uh, responsibility. So it is absolutely forbidden to modify a homologated safety cage. And as a kind reminder, uh, if a safety cage is homologated with optional members, the safety cage must be used with those uh, optional members. Once again, I encourage you to uh, uh, register on the FAA website to get access to the content. Uh, the videos have been recording on Vimeo. I will put a direct link to the video in the description of this video. And uh, I will provide some more content uh, in the coming weeks about the other seminars. So feel free to like and subscribe so I can produce more content like this.